What's up, everybody? I'm Derek Oltheus. Welcome to another episode of Trout Academy. Today, we're going to be talking about my top 10 confidence flies, and this comes by request from a viewer. So let's jump into this. One of my favorite flies is a mouse fly, and I always tie them with a hook in the tail that rides up. The reason being because fish will oftentimes grab a mouse by the tail and pull it under before they eat it. They're trying to drown it or disorient the mouse because a mouse can bite. I've seen fish come after a mouse fly like 10 times on a single retrieve because they're just grabbing at the tail and pulling it under. Oftentimes they'll do that before they ever try to actually eat the, the whole fly. So if you have that hook in the tail, you're going to get a lot more hookups than you would otherwise. I like to fish them on moonless nights when it's as dark as can be during the summer for brown trout or brook trout. And when fished in that way, I think they are one of the most effective ways to target big fish. But to me, even if they weren't, they're one of the most fun ways that you can fish. And seeing that visual of a fish coming up and eating a mouse or at night hearing it is just so much fun. And part of the fun is you never know if that's a giant fish or just a little fish that's super aggressive, but it always makes me wonder, was that a big fish or was that just an overly aggressive little fish? And most of the time, they're bigger fish. A bird's nest. I got turned onto this fly from watching Ralph Cutter, who used to film Bugs of the Underworld. And I think this is another one of those super versatile flies. You can fish it like a mayfly. You can fish it like a stonefly. You can use it in lakes for water boatmen. Or you can use it like a scud. So the ways that I fish it... I'll either use it underneath an indicator or even dead drifting it with high stick or Euro nymph rig in a river. I'll fish it stripped with small little one inch strips or a hand retrieve in a lake. Or I'll fish it like a water boatman. And what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of floatant, like the powder floatant, and I'll put it on there and it traps little air bubbles and I'll put a little weight, maybe an inch to four inches in front of it and it will sink straight down and it acts just like a water boatman. As a water boatman hits the water, it sinks all the way down to the bottom or swims to the bottom and then it comes right back up and I try and fish it the same way. I'll let it sink, 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 and then I'll start stripping it in to bring it up, and then I'll let it sink again, strip it to come up, and I've caught a lot of fish using this technique. The great thing as well about that bird's nest is because it's so versatile, you can tie it in different colors like tan, olive, orange, gray, and fish it just like a scud with those small little strips or that hand retrieve or it can mimic mayflies in a lake. But really good pattern, covers a lot of bases, and it's always in my box. The woolly bugger. I love a woolly bugger because it's so versatile. I can use it as a minnow pattern, I can use it as a leech, or I can even cut the tail a little bit and use it as a damselfly. So probably the top three ways that I fish it is first with a bead head, so it moves kind of like this when I strip it, and that mimics the movement of a leech. It's the same general size, shape, color, all that stuff does a great job as a leech. The second way that I fish it is with the weight about 18 inches from the fly, and then I'll tie the fly on a loop knot so that it has some movement, and when I strip it, the weight will move it a little bit, but also just having that loop knot on there It'll move a little bit side to side, especially as I get some rod movement in there. And it really looks like a minnow. The third way that I fish it 
is completely weightless and I typically cut down the tail so the total size of the fly is less than an inch long and then I fish it just in the surface in that first inch or two of the water column as a damsel fly when those damsels are popping in the summer. That is a pretty fish. The pheasant tail. The pheasant tail is definitely my favorite nymph, especially when river fishing. I like to fish it underneath an indicator. I'll fish it on a Euro rig. I'm just tying on a pretty short dropper. I'm just gonna go about a foot behind my dry. And I fish it a lot in lakes, just slow strips. I think it mimics a ton of different insects and it just is one of those flies that has consistently produced a lot of fish and big fish for me. Next up is an egg pattern. I know a lot of people hate egg patterns, but they just work. And I fish them three different ways. One, I fish it when I'm sight fishing oftentimes, using it as an indicator. Okay, here he comes. Oh. I'll put it maybe 18 inches or two feet away from a small mayfly or some other little nymph that I wouldn't be able to see. However, I can see that egg in a bright color like pink. I can see where my fly should be because I can see the egg. I'll see that little white of their mouth opening and closing so I know they've eaten my other fly. Two, I fish them like an egg. They're particularly effective in places like Alaska where you have spawning salmon and fish are stacked up just gorging themselves on eggs. And the third way that I fish it is like a blob fly underneath an indicator in lakes. And I'm, I'm not really sure if they're eating it out of curiosity like they would maybe some power bait or they're eating it because they're hardwired to eat eggs. But sometimes when I've tried a lot of flies in lakes and nothing else seems to work, I'll tie on an egg and hang it under an indicator, and oftentimes I'll catch fish on it. Next up is the scud. There's two varieties of scud that I fish. I fish one with a straight body and one with a curved body. I usually fish the one with a straight body because when scuds swim, they have that straight profile. And when they're relaxed and resting in weeds, then they'll kind of bend over and hunch over. So the two ways that I fish them is if I'm fishing them stripped, I'll fish the elongated straight body. And if I'm fishing them underneath an indicator, I'll use the curved bodied one because it would mimic the natural shape of one that's just resting or sitting there. When I fish a scud with the straight body, I'm stripping it typically with really small strips, an inch or less, or that hand retrieve, just keeping it moving, really small movements, because that's how a scud swims. Next up is the worm fly. There's three main ways that I fish the worm fly. In a river, I either fish it underneath an indicator on a bounce rig or something like that, typically pretty close to the bottom, or I fish it on a Euro rig. And the third way that I fish it is usually in a lake, and I'll fish it like a jig. So I'll let it bounce on the bottom, and I tie them typically on a jig hook with a tungsten bead, and I tie them so that the legs really move and it just creates a lot of action and I'll bounce it along on the bottom or jig it along through logs and weed beds, things like that. And there are times that fish just cannot resist because of those little legs that move everywhere. You can fish them under indicators as well and I have done well at times. For instance, when we went to Iceland, this was in the spring. They were rolling. You could see them out there. We tried a bunch of streamers. We tried a bunch of nymphs. There just really wasn't anything that seemed to consistently catch fish. And so I put on a worm and drifted it underneath an indicator. And we started catching a ton of fish. A parachute Adams. This is my favorite dry fly. I always have them in my box in various sizes. 
I can fish them as a drake in those larger sizes or in the smaller sizes like a blue wing olive or a pale morning dun. I can fish them in lakes like a mosquito or just kind of a general pattern. But this is definitely my go-to dry fly. I think it covers a ton of bases and you know it's just it's proven itself a parachute Adams is one of the best dry flies out there an articulated streamer I've got a pattern that I tie it doesn't have a name however it's got a couple hooks on it it's got a couple joints in it and it's got a big huge head on it the reason that's important is because those pushes of water can trigger the predatory response that a fish will feel through its lateral line but also the bigger head will allow it to really move a lot in the water if you give it a hard strip and then a quick break it's gonna jolt forward and then kind of turn to one side or the other and I think that movement really triggers strikes as well because it looks like a wounded or disoriented bait fish I've got that pattern that I tie and I have a lot of confidence in, but you could replace that with a dungeon or several other patterns that are very similar. As long as it moves well in the water and it has that big head to push and kind of make the fly move, I don't think the pattern really matters that much. Find something that you're confident in and fish that, but definitely i always have big streamers in my box and streamer fishing to me is one of the most fun ways that you can fish i love seeing fish become super predatory and just smash a streamer next up is a jig streamer i tie them with just a little bit of flash and an underbody and then a clump of marabou they're basically just a marabou jig you can fish them in a river with a euro rod and just tight line them and bounce them along the bottom. I fish them in lakes. You know, they are definitely one of my favorite, favorite flies. And I have caught a ton of big fish on those jig streamers. Typically, I'm, I'm strip pause, strip pause, strip pause so that the fly just kind of jumps and hops along the bottom. You know, you can mix it up and do faster, shorter strips so that it's moving more kind of like a leech would but I really, really love those jig streamers. You can do the same thing with a woolly bugger if you tie them on a jig hook with a tungsten bead or with lead eyes so that the hook rides point up and they do much the same thing, but very, very effective, really great fly. The last fly that I'm gonna mention is a coronamid or a midge pattern. I tie them very simply. I use a black thread for the body, I use a white or a silver bead for the head, and then I use a silver and a red wire for the rib. And this pattern has just been the pattern that works the very best for me. I fish them everywhere in lakes and rivers from Pyramid Lake to High Mountain Lakes. I fish them in all sorts of rivers and I just make sure that I have various sizes. I typically am fishing in a river about a size 18, but I will have smaller ones like a size 20 or occasionally like on the Provo River, a size 22. And then when I fish lakes like Pyramid Lake or High Mountain Lakes, I'm typically using a size 16, but will go up to as large as maybe a size 12 for Pyramid Lake. This is definitely always a fly that is in my fly box and at times is the very most effective, especially in the spring on lakes as you get big coronamid hatches or during the winter on a lot of the rivers that I fish. On lakes, you can fish these midges or coronamids a few different ways. One, you can do a slow retrieve from the bottom up with like a hand twist, or you can put them under an indicator and just let them sit there. And I occasionally just kind of pop the indicator to make the flies move a little That's bit a nice and I tie one. them on a loop knot just to give them a little bit more movement in the water. Most of the time in rivers I'm fishing them underneath an indicator rig right along the bottom or occasionally on my Euro setup. 
You might have noticed that I have 11 flies, not 10. I did 11 because there's a few flies here that I could interchange one with another, such as the jig streamer with the woolly bugger, depending on how you tie the woolly bugger, or the bird's nest and like the scud. So I include an 11th just as kind of a bonus because of that. But these are definitely my confidence flies. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments below. If you think this content would benefit somebody, share it with a friend. We'll catch you on the next episode.